the algorithm that we are going to see is uh, is called as the Lloyd's algorithm. or sometimes also referred to as the k means algorithm though this is a misnomer the problem is the k means problem you are trying to find k means uh, which represents the partitions um, but sometimes the algorithm is also called as the k means algorithm though it's the k means problem for which the lloyds algorithm is a solution is a possible way to uh, solve this problem uh, may not be exactly but then a heuristic way to solve this problem Anyway, so names aside, so let us look at what this algorithm is right now. Um, it is a very, very simple algorithm. So, it does the following. So, the first step is initialization. We have a bunch of data points which we need to first put in some boxes, right. So, we will talk about what, what are good ways to initialize a little later, but for now, for the moment, assume that we are starting with some way to put points in boxes, which means that we have um, z0 1, z0 2 till z0 n, everything in between 1 to k. So, the 0 here indicates the iteration number, right. So, at initialization, you are saying each point has been assigned a cluster indicator, uh, some value that you can, you can get started with. Now, what is the algorithm do? The algorithm essentially does two simple things. It runs until convergence and we will talk about what it means to say the algorithm converges in a bit, uh, but let me put down the algorithm first. The first step is compute the mean step. This is step 1, which means uh, what we do is for all k, we compute mu k, which is the mean in the tth iteration as simply the way we defined earlier, sum over i equals 1 to n, x i into indicator of z t i equals k. In the tth iteration, uh, does your partition look like uh, put ith data point in the kth cluster divided by sum over i equals 1 to n. Um, x um, indicator of z t i equals k. Well, every round you are creating a new partition that is the idea and uh, what we are saying is that uh, once the partition is created points go into boxes and then you can compute the mean of each of these boxes and these means we are just going to call them mu t k to indicate that we are in the tth iteration. Uh, that is the easy point. So, the main crux of the algorithm relies on this step that I will put down now. It is called the reassignment step. Which says, how am I going to reassign the partition, right? So, which means that I start with some z's, uh, which is z0. Now, in the next round, I need to change it to an updated, you know, cluster indicator values. How do I do that, right? So, for all i, for every data point, I need to say which cluster it goes to now in the next step, right? So, I am going to do the following. I am going to do reassign z t plus 1 i, which is the cluster indicator for the ith data point in the next round as the following. So basically, what I am doing is, um, I have a partition which means points are uh, been put inside boxes, every box has a mean now. I look at every point and then compare its distance to the mean in the to the box in which it is assigned to, to the mean of every other box. If I find a box whose mean is strictly less than, the, the distance to the mean in a different box is strictly less than the distance to the current mean inside the same box then I assign this data point in the next round to that other box, which means which is exactly what is happening here. I am saying z t plus 1 i, the assignment to the t ith data point in the t plus first iteration is just that k that minimizes the distance of the point 
to the mean of each of these boxes which box has a mean whose distance i am who, whom i am closest to right so uh, this is assuming um, if uh, the current assignment Uh, mean so if the mean of current assignment is smallest then don't reassign so maybe you are in a situation where the current points the current means distance is exactly same as the distance of the mean to a different cluster in that case i i don't want to jump i'll still be in the same box where i am but if I find a box whose mean is strictly less than the current distance to the current mean, then distance square to the current mean, then I will make this jump, right. So, that is what uh, is the understanding. Um, so, this is all the algorithm is. Um, now, we need to talk about a few things here. Um, so, what does it mean to say this algorithm converges? <coughs> well, what is happening in each round is that I am changing the partition from one to another. So, at some point, if I encounter a situation where no point wants to jump partitions, jump boxes, right? So, every point is happy with its own uh, box, which means that the distance of each point to its own boxes mean is strictly less than any other boxes mean, then no jumping around happens and then the algorithm is said to have converged. Uh, the question is, I have boldly put down until convergence, which means that you know we need to first see uh, if this algorithm converges at all, right? So the so uh, it could happen that I, I am in a certain partition, um, and then I change in, in round two to a different partition, and then round three to a different partition, and the next round I come back to the original partition. If that happens, I'll be stuck in a loop, and then I'll keep you know moving around, and I will never you know change from one partition to another uh, i mean i will never converge the algorithm will never converge right so i'll keep changing partitions but then i will never converge but then here i'm saying until convergence which means that uh, we need to first understand if this algorithm converges at all right so all this algorithm is saying that hoping that is is that i am in some partition uh, and i hope that i go to a better partition after making this change right so because uh, intuitively we want partitions to be to all look similar so every point should be closer to its own mean than any other mean if that does not happen then we make a jump um, and and we hope that this will eventually lead to a partition which is which is a reasonably good partition uh, but then that's a hope at this point we need to argue why this algorithm will converge and if so i mean will it converge if so how how do we argue that right so that needs an argument The fact is that Lloyd's algorithm converges. And we will see why a little later, but uh, we can argue that this algorithm indeed converges, that that is the good news. Uh, however, it could so happen that the algorithm not, does not necessarily converge to the optimal solution, right? So, the converged solution may not be optimal, meaning it may not be necessarily the uh, solution to the original problem that we put down, which was to which was this NP hard problem. Obviously, we, we do not expect uh, to solve this original problem because it is known to be hard. Uh, so, whatever the algorithm results in may not necessarily solve this problem, right. So, that is the that is something that we have to live with in some sense, uh, but uh, produces reasonable clusters in practice. So, in practice, uh, this is a very popular algorithm and it uh, kind of produces not so bad clusters. 
Um, so, what we will do now is ask a couple of questions about this algorithm and then try to answer each of these questions, right? So, now I put down some algorithms. So, there are lots of questions that one needs to ask about uh, what kind of uh, data sets where this algorithm will work well, what and there are many other questions. We will first list down some of the important key questions about this algorithm and we will try to answer uh, those questions in the as we go along. Okay. So, here are some questions. First question is about convergence. Does the algorithm converge? The second question is, so let us say it converges, what kind of clusters does it produce? The nature of clusters. The third question one might ask is, so there are some things which have not been specified clearly in the algorithm. One of the things is initialization. How do I initialize this, this algorithm? And finally, uh, so we are, I have I've kind of, uh, you know, uh, sidestepped this issue that we are assuming so far that given a set of points, we know the number of boxes that the bo points can have to be clustered into. Uh, but nobody is telling us that. We are just given a bunch of points and then in a su unsupervised way, we need to figure out you know some natural groupings which means that what is the k that we should use that works well for this data set right so the choice of k is also a question that one needs to ask so we'll try to answer all these questions uh, in the following part of this uh, of this i mean general discussion about the loids and the k means algorithm